Welcome to Pastor Jim on location. Once again, uh, we're here at uh, the palatial parking lot of Lakeshore Assembly of God. I'm behind the pavilion today trying to find a little shade, uh, made a little more comfortable for the production. Not doing real well with that. But God bless. Good to have everybody with me today on this uh, beautiful Wednesday afternoon, September, I think it's September 9th, right? Right, Lisa? Okay, Lisa's behind the three cameras. And uh, we're live on James Porstowski, Lakeshore Assembly of God. And we'll upload this a little bit later to www.lakeshoreassemblyofgod.com. And let me remind you, um, I forgot the speaker. We forgot our speaker system here. All right. Well, you can tell this is live. All right. Let's see if we can plug it in. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. Okay, there we go. There we got some sound. Once again, welcome to Lakeshore Assembly of God for Pastor Jim and Location. And it's uh, September 9th, Wednesday. And uh, boy, we've had a really busy morning here at the church. We had to run out here to set up. So God bless. We're breathing a, a little exhale here and getting going. And what we want to remind people as well, this Sunday we're going to be going from two worship services to one. So this Sunday, first time, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. will be our service. We, uh, my wife and I were just in the sanctuary and uh, we have been daily reconfiguring the whole sanctuary using every square inch of of the sanctuary to put the pews, to space them out. And uh, so we've got more pews we're gonna be able to use and they will be appropriately safe spaced. So we're gonna ask anybody that attends, just wear your mask into the service once you're sitting down and you're safe spaced from anyone else, please take your mask off and enjoy the service. You have that option, okay? So God bless. Well, today we're gonna talk about knocked off his high horse. Well, who am I talking about? Well, there's only one that was really knocked off his high horse, and that was none other than the Apostle Paul. But before he was the Apostle, he was simply uh, a Jewish leader by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Now, the text today is going to be Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And why don't we read that? We're going to read, it's 1 through 9, I'm going to read the first few verses. Ch Acts chapter 9. 1 through, let's read 1 through 3. 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. It's unbelievable uh, what Saul was going through. First of all, they called the gospel of Jesus Christ and following Christ, they called it the way, the way. And that's really reference to John 14, 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So they called the movement of Christianity in the early church, it wasn't called Christianity, it, it was called the, the, the way movement, okay? Secondly, we see that he's breathing out... Um, murderous threats against the disciples. And we need to understand the level with which that uh, uh, any person who has a religious spirit ultimately will become very unholy. Because the religious spirit is not the Holy Spirit. A religious spirit is technically, I believe it's connected to, de it's demonic. Being religious isn't completely wrong, but a religious spirit is when we negate the law, the heart, the spirit of God for the sake of what we think is, is more necessary. This is why people all over the world in many different religious systems, they have no problem killing people in the name of their gods. And sadly, in, in, in human history, there were times that Christians tried to do the, right, the, the same thing, rather. So we need to understand a religious spirit's a dangerous thing. The Apostle Paul was going to arrest people simply because 
they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, an interesting thing, in chapter 6 of the book of Acts, we see there was a young, powerful man of God by the name of Stephen. And we see that after Stephen shared one of the most amazing sermons in the New Testament, in chapter 6, we see that they picked up stones uh, to stone him to death. And who did they get permission with which to then stone him to death? None other than Saul of Tarsus. Saul gave them the, quote, ecclesiastical cover with which then they could throw the stones and kill Stephen. Now, I bring that up because it's interesting. Arrest them and take them, bring them back to Jerusalem and basically put them in in jail for what? For believing in Jesus Christ. I want to bring California up because right now in California, go to church, go to jail. <laughs> Did you know that? If you go to an inside service in California, you can go to jail. Okay? But if you need an abortion, no problem. But if you need to buy liquor, no problem. But if you need to gamble, no problem. But if you need to protest, no problem. If you need to riot, no problem. But go to church, go to jail. So we need to understand that even in our own culture, we're seeing a time where something as wholesome as grandma sitting in a Methodist church is an unholy thing. But people in the streets breaking windows, going up to people as you saw in the news in Pittsburgh, uh, a bunch of, of activists, Black Lives Matters activists, went up to lady, some lady, she, they ate some of her food, drank her, and the bullhorns shouting at them, this is okay. But people going to church is a terrible, dangerous thing. So we need to see in our own culture that we're seeing something that resembles what we see in the book of Acts. Now, an interesting thing happened to Saul as he was on his way to Damascus to find more Christians. A light uh, from heaven flashed around him. And I'll call it a heavenly bolt. Hallelujah. And this heavenly bolt was so bright and, and it, was like, it, was like, it was like a lightning, but it wasn't a physical lightning. It was, it was a supernatural lightning. And, and when it hit Saul, it knocked him off his horse. And we need to understand that God has, he has the right, he has the privilege. He can knock anybody off their high horse anytime they want. You know, there's times we see people just on their high horse and and we, we, we wonder, we say they're going to get their comeuppance. We use terminology like that. But we need to understand that God had plans for Saul. Saul is an enemy of the cross, but he will soon become one of the cross's most precious friends. And we need to see the redemptive atmosphere that God has for those that are even against him. So we need to pray for people in our own culture. I'm starting to pray for some of these radical activists that are trying to, uh, I believe, destroy our country, destroy the church. We need to start praying for these people. We need to find out what their names are and, and bring it before God. Because the same energy that these people are trying to destroy things, imagine if they were trying to build things with the same ingenuity and the same um, energy. Amen? And I believe that God, that's what God wants. He wants there to be a revival of people who hate him that now they experience, they have a revelation of his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. And now they're going to be used for God the rest of their lives. Amen. And in a way, we all fall into that category if we already believe. Okay, so this lightning bolt comes, he gets knocked to the ground. And what's funny is, what does Saul say? Okay, listen to this. What does Saul say? Uh, a voice came from heaven. Listen to what it said. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? <laughs> and verse 5 says, who are you? <laughs> That's kind of cool. He doesn't know who it is. He hears this voice, but he doesn't know who it is. And you know who answers? Jesus. And Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Okay? Now, before we go further, it's significant the way Jesus answered. Now, it's simple. But believe it or not, sometimes when something simple happens, it's yet significant. When Jesus said, I am Jesus, you need to understand, when Jesus uses the words, I am, that's powerful stuff. Because we see in the Old Testament 
that, that God the Father, he told Moses, go back to the children of Israel and tell them that I am have sent you. We need to understand that God is, he is the completed, not version, he is the completeness of, of any wholesome, holy characteristic. There, he is, there is nothing beyond God. So, so if you're thinking of something in totality, the I am comes to mind. And Jesus said other things about being I am. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. I am the door, Jesus said. I am the light of the world. I am the good vine, and I am the true vine. So we need to understand that every time Jesus said I am, it was significant. And remember when they came to take Jesus away? Listen, remember this? In, in the book of John, they came to take Jesus away to, from the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember when he said, I am he? What happened to the guards, folks? They fell backwards to the ground. The authority of, of who Jesus really is, God in the flesh. They couldn't stand it. And the guards, holy armored guards, fell backwards to the ground. It's like a speck of the glory of God leaked out of Jesus. And, that's, and they had to get off and then arrest Jesus. Friends, that wasn't easy. Hallelujah. They, they must have, I believe the guards were terrified of Christ from that moment on. Because then they realized, as at the cross, when one said, truly this man was the Son of God. All right, let's finish the narrative here today. So, he then tells them, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. So they were hearing something happening, but they couldn't see anything. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was totally blinded. Now, have you ever heard the term blinded by the light? Well, in a way, this is a good illustration of that. He is now physically blind, but now spiritually he sees. And I believe that God did this, took away his natural uh, sight. I believe, I believe God took away Saul's natural sight so that he would have time to think about what just happened. Sometimes you can have an experience with God and isn't it true we can get back to the mundaneness and the normal stuff of our everyday life? And it's so amazing how sometimes we can uh, uh, forget some amazing thing that the Lord maybe has done for ourselves, for you. Maybe you ex experience something powerful from God, and then hours later you're, just, you're, trying, you're getting back to normal. And we need to understand that Saul experienced this lightning bolt from heaven. He's seen a bright light. He is physically blinded he has to be led around by the hand and for those three days he had three days to think about what is God up to what is God really going to be doing and he said you will be told what to do so they heard the sound and they did not see him so Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing so they led him by the hand into Damascus for three days he was blind, and he did not eat, and he did not drink. And I believe that that was his choice. I believe that, that Saul purposely was fasting to draw closer to God, and he might have been a little desperate. I'm blind. I don't want to be blind. God, will you take away my blindness? So he might have been fasting for multiple reasons, but one certainly was. He knew that he was experience, experiencing a, a unbelievable, manifest, um, supernatural thing of God. He, he had never seen anything like this. He had never experienced anything like this. And this Jesus, whom he ha thought he hated and persecuted, now he was going to become someday, actually the calling is already there, he's going to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a story of redemption. You know, wherever you're at today, whatever, whatever you're not, you need to understand through Christ, you need to, you need to lean towards what the Lord would have you to become. We, we, we never start where we, we, we have to start where we start, but we can't stay there. I remember 
When I first got saved, I used to say, God loved me so much that he couldn't leave me the way he found me. Amen? Hallelujah. What God did for me, and in a way, if you think about this, what God did for me the moment I got saved was the greatest gift that I could ever receive, which was forgiveness and eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen? But what I do for the rest of my life can then be my gift to God. Amen? So my prayer is that you will understand that no matter wh what you're going through, no matter how good or bad things are right now, things change, we go through seasons, Lord knows. Every, everything, nothing stays the same. If something is just right, hold on, because it won't be just right for very long. It's just the nature of life. We want things to just be frozen in time. They can't be. Time does not freeze for you. However, the promises of God, in a way, they are frozen. God is sure about the promises that he's made to you for the rest of your life and for eternity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. Thank you for Saul, who is then going to be called Paul. And God, we thank you for that work of redemption that took place in his life. And God, we too have seen a light. For if you have revealed who you truly are to our hearts, our eyes have been opened as well. And God, we thank you and praise you for the work that you're doing in our, in our hearts, our lives, our families, our communities. And God, we pray for our nation right now. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. I want to say God bless everybody. Have a great Friday, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, here at Lakeshore Assembly of God Church. Come and worship with us. We're going to have a full tilt worship service. We've only had one hour services. Uh, the service this Sunday is going to be a little bit longer. We're going to have a blast in the Lord this Sunday, so I hope you can come and be part of it this Sunday. God bless. Have a great day.